helping us to celebrate the launch of Smart Mind. The Smart Mind is an open access journal launched by Weili and uh, Tianjin University. I'm one of academic editors of Smart Mind. The editors in chief of Smart Mind are from the City University of Hong Kong. Today, Professor Liu from the City University of Hong Kong will give the 12th seminar. Now, please let me briefly introduce the speaker. First, Professor Jin Liu is a chair professor of mechanical engineering, a vice president and a dean of graduate study at the City University of Hong Kong. Professor Liu is a president of Hong Kong a Materials Research Society and a former president of the Hong Kong Society of uh, theoretical and applied mechanics. Professor Liu's primary research interest is advanced nanomaterials and its integration in mechanical and uh, biomedical systems using the combination of experimental mechanics and uh, mechanical simulation. He has also branched out into several other areas of interest, including surface science and uh, engineering, biomedic uh, biomechanics. Uh, residual stresses and the mechanics of nanomaterials. He has published more than 400 journal papers, including papers in Nature, uh, Cow Story, uh, Science, Nature Materials, uh, Nature Communications, Science Advances, Materials Today, Advanced Materials PRL, and so on. Uh, his publication has been cited more than 25,700 times. He received the French Knight of the National Order of Merit and the French Knight of the National Order of the Nation of Honor in 2006 and 2017, respectively. He was elected as an academician by the National Academy of Technologies of France in 2011. He received the Guanghua Engineering Science and Technology Award in 2018. Today, Professor Liu will give a talk about a recent development of structural nanomaterials theories, cost and uh, applications. Let's welcome Professor Liu, please. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Zhang, for this uh, kind of introduction. So let's, uh, let me share my screen with the audience. Yeah. Have you? It's okay. And uh, good evening, everyone in North America. So, uh, first of all, I would like to thank the editorial board to invite me for this uh, online talk. So today, uh, my topic will be recent development of structural materials concept, manufacturing, and applications. So I'm from the City University of Hong Kong, Center for Advanced Structural Material, and also a Greater Bay Joint Division, Shenyang National uh, Laboratory for Material Science in Shenzhen. So today, I'm very happy to share with you our recent research uh, in the area of uh, structural nanomaterial. So this is the outline of my presentation. So I will give you a brief introduction about uh, our research topics and also uh, the different activities in my research center. And then I will uh, give you three uh, major new example. One is a hierarchical nano twin. Another is a super nano structured material. And the third one is uh, 3D and 4D additive manufacturing of nanomaterial, and I will give you some example of uh, applications and future development. So, uh, as a structure material, you have uh, two types of structure material. One is for civil engineering, another is for mechanical engineering. And uh, uh, so, personally, I'm from mechanical engineering, so my topic is mainly for the advanced mobility solution. As you know, mobility is not only the mechanical system today, that can also be a smartphone uh, indicated here. So uh, that can be robotics, aircraft, uh, car, etc. Uh, so today I don't have time to 
So elaborate on all these topics, but I just want to give you some example of last development of our research. So the Center for Advanced Structure Material uh, was created when I joined the CTO 10 years ago, and our research focus is uh, multi-scale mechanics of advanced material. And the material that we study are mainly uh, High entropy alloy, intermetallics, metallic glass, structural nanomaterial, super nanomaterial, and 3D uh, printing and plus. And we also uh, work on different generic topics like uh, materials general and also 1D, 2D materials mechanics. So today I will mainly focus on super nanomaterial and uh, 3D printing. So the major challenge for the structural material is how to solve the problem of conflicting properties of uh, strength and ductility. So the recent development of the new structure nanomaterial shows uh, we may have different routes to achieve high strength and high ductility. So we may uh, mention uh, multi-layer structure, hierarchical structure, gradient structure by model uh, nanogram and with a large gram structure, and also a nano precipitate, nano twin, hierarchical nano twin, and the super, na super nano dual phase. So I will mainly present hierarchical twin and the super nano uh, dual phase research. But for all the other research, you can refer to different uh, paper I indicate here. So basically, uh, our key scientific topics in my group is hierarchical nanostructure material. So we start from structural design, uh, nanostructure forming mechanism and the evolution, and how to develop controllable processing and optimization, and how to generate what's the plastic deformation mechanism and uh, how to ob obtain the dual property of the structural material. Of course, all the structural material are designated for industrial application. So we also work on the uh, prototype for uh, generating the nanostructure for industrial applications. Uh, I can say uh, what uh, we have done are mainly uh, five major discovery. One is the nanostructure with surface gradient. Second is a multi-layered nanostructure that can uh, generate uh, a strand non-localization system. And uh, then uh, we have uh, embedded multi-phase nanogram and nano-twin structure and the hierarchical nano-twinning structure and the super nano uh, dual phase. So in terms of uh, research methodology, uh, basically uh, we look after the different process that generate uh, nanomaterial and we develop numerical simulation to simulate mechanical behavior uh, using a finite element method, uh, theoretical method, and also uh, different uh, new methods like uh, uh, molecular dynamics. And also uh, we have discovery and generate a different uh, new happening mechanisms such as uh, making multiplication, uh, 2D nano twin and nano precipitate, a 3D nano twin, and also a gradient structure with a shear bending multiplication with two phase blending. So uh, basically we, for each type of material, we try to develop simulation model material processing, and the toughening mechanism, the three aspects of this uh, development. So the first example I want to show today is uh, nano-twinning materials. So as you know, uh, uh, the main objective of structural materials is how to manage the defect of heterogeneity inside of the uh, material, especially true for the uh, metallic material. So basically, 
we try to manage the chemical heterogeneity, such as the precipitate, multiple phase, or topological or physical heterogeneity, such as the grand boundary, twin boundary. Okay. And in the terms of a chemical heterogeneity, uh, if we go down to the atomic uh, level, uh, we can also manage the composition fluctuation, fluctuation locally, and also we can generate uh, vacancy and manage pores in, at the atomic level. So in this case, we generate different uh, phase boundary and the location wall. And for the composition fluctuation, we can generate uh, latest distortion. So all this heterogeneity, uh, if we manage it with uh, intelligence, then that can help to generate the dual property for us. So uh, to narrow down the different research that we develop, is uh, uh, basically we uh, start from uh, metallic glass, then uh, we can work on nano glass. So it's, uh, uh, the range is around the 100 nanometer. And today I want to introduce you a so-called super nano dual phase material. Uh, that means the two phases are smaller than 10 nanometer. Of course, as a metallic material or crystal material, we always have a gram boundary stabilization problem with nanogram when the gram size is very small. And also we have other type of defect to be managed, such as a hierarchical nano twin, or we can also engineering the dislocation. So these are major trend for the development of a new structure material uh, with a crystal structure or amorphous structure. So for the uh, nano twin, uh, basically what we try to do is to enhance the nano twin uh, density inside of the structure. So as you all know, uh, nano twin is a very good element or ingredient to obtain the high strength, high tranquility. Uh, so you can see here, this is uh, uh, on the right hand side is, uh, is an example of the three uh, level of hierarchical twin. Okay, you have uh, first the T1, which is uh, uh, a dealing twin, and by mechanical loading, you can generate a second order twin, and during the uh, final loading, then that Second order twin have enough space to generate third order twin so that the structure and the mechanical property of the material uh, is a high strength, high ductility material. So to better understand this, uh, you can see this uh, construction. So you can imagine all the uh, white area are uh, twin boundary. So as you see, uh, this can be, uh, this is a force uh, nano uh, fourth order twin. And then based on this idea, we have uh, achieved the fifth order hierarchical twin. So the hierarchical twin can obtain a high strength type activity. So the first example is a trip steel. Uh, we have achieved a, a high density nano twin and uh, the strength Yield strength and uh, uniform elongation uh, is uh, excellent compared to other existing uh, previous published material. And compared to other uh, groups work, such as uh, Postec uh, uh, or Professor Nick Kim's group's work, which was a highlight uh, in uh, The Economist, so they say an alloy of iron and aluminum is as good as titanium at a tenth of the cost. Okay, so these results uh, mentioned here is this red line. Okay, but you can see uh, using the SMAT uh, clips deal, uh, 
uh, we can even obtain better results compared to uh, this uh, red line published in Nature. So if we plot all our results on the European Steel Development Roadmap 2030, okay, 10 years after, you can see the material we obtain are already inside of the target of this uh, European Steel Development. And also with ultra high strength nano trip steel, our mechanical property is uh, even better out of this zone defined by the uh, European uh, Steel Development Roadmap. Uh, so that means uh, it's possible to have high strength, high ductility material uh, in different variety, and we just need to manage the not as a nano scale, the nano twin, and with high density nano twin. So how to generate a higher density nano twin? Increasing the order of nano twin is a very important issue. So uh, on the model material, which is pure silver, we have successfully demonstrated how to obtain the fifth order nano twin. And basically uh, by using the in situ uh, mechanical test, and also diffraction, we can easily demonstrate we obtain the fifth order twin. And this is a good management of a different level of uh, twin spacing. So basically to generate the next order twin, we need to have a larger enough twin space to uh, generate the next order's twin. Then, if we plot our results on this uh, curve, we can see the higher order twin, uh, higher than two second order, get a much better result than two order nano twin, and also much better results than gradient material. So that means uh, we still have a lot of rooms to improve our mechanical property in the engineering material. This is achieved on the model material, which is uh, pure silver with a very low stacking photo energy. So today with high entropy alloy, it's possible to generate uh, uh, more uh, nano twin. So I don't, I think it's possible in the high entropy alloy, we can also generate the fifth order nano twin, uh, even higher. So the second example I want to show you is a super nano structure material. The super nano structure material is a new family of material compared. We always know we have a material uh, crystal or amorphous, okay? But uh, uh, this uh, proposal is to how to develop a material with uh, very small domain, lower than 10 nanometer for each composition. Okay, so basically we have, a, we may have a different combination. Okay, we may have a, a large number of uh, metallic glass or large number of uh, uh, nano crystal. Okay, so this is, but the, all this domain should be lower than 10 nano. So why 10 nano? Because uh, as we define, the nano material is uh, smaller than 100 nano, okay? But for carbon nanotube, uh, for other two-dimensional material, we, alre we already exceed or uh, can generate a structure lower than 10 nano. But for the metallic material, especially for the structure material, it's quite difficult to achieve this goal. Once you achieve a material such as, uh, say, uh, type five, uh, nano crystal one and nano crystal two, uh, it's quite difficult to uh, uh, produce this material. But uh, in the type four, if you have a nano uh, crystal uh, plus one boundary, then 
it's quite easy for the material to merge together to generate a, a ground size groups. So for this reason, it's difficult to produce a, at large scale a material with the same composition, nanocrystal plus ground boundary. So in our study, what we targeted first was the generation of metallic glass, so amorphous structure with another metallic glass. But at the end, what we have achieved is a material with a very small uh, ground size nanocrystal plus metallic glass. So in fact, why we uh, work on this topic? As you know, uh, metallic glass is uh, already a very interesting material with a very high mechanical property, but with a very low deformation capacity, especially in the area of uh, uh, plastic deformation zone. So uh, the major problem is when you generate a small uh, defect in this structure, then that may uh, develop as a shear band, then that generates a catastrophic failure of the material. So in 2011, we have uh, uh, done some simulation work. We demonstrate if we are able to generate a material with two phases, with a difference of 20% of mechanical property, then it's possible mixed at the atomic level. It's possible to generate a multiple shear band structure that may absorb the energy to generate a higher uh, deformation capacity. Then we try to obtain this with a, a heat treatment and we can obtain uh, some area with uh, uh, order and some other area without order, uh, like, uh, like this uh, structure, but it's not homogeneously distributed in the structure. So that can uh, the overall behavior is like uh, metallic glass. So for this reason, we continue to search how to generate a multiple phase material. So to further study this, we have developed different mechanical testing method to investigate what's the relationship between the viscoelasticity of the material and the heterogeneity at the atomic level of the metallic glass. By this way, we can uh, better understand what kind of heterogeneity can generate the primary shear band. So basically, we have developed the uh, dynamic micropillar test and uh, a mechanical test that can identify the fast beta relaxation inside of the metallic glass. What we demonstrate is the fast beta relaxation can uh, indicate to us what the state of the heterogeneity at the atomic level and how to generate this uh, uh, shear band. Then, after all this study, we come out with a special material, which is a dual phase uh, super nano material. Okay. So the material we have, the first material we have developed is a magnesium copper yttrium alloy. So as you may see here, the blue curve is the magnesium based metallic glass. And then our new alloy has a mechanical property much higher in terms of uh, elastic yield stress and the deformation capacity. So from a structural viewpoint, we can see the ma this material is a quite homogeneous material and the blue part as a material with a, a, a crystal, the size is around six 
six nanometer, and the yellow part is metallic glass with another composition, and this material uh, it can provide this excellent mechanical property. So how we are applying this material? So basically we use a quite simple process, which is a PVD. So more importantly, you, we need to choose a right composition for the substrate. And by changing the processing parameter, we achieve a new structure, which is a nanocrystal embedded in a matrix with metallic glass. In this particular case, the uh, metallic glass part is uh, uh, magnesium rich and uh, the crystal part is uh, copper rich. Okay, so basically uh, the design concept is how to find a composition of the substrate uh, of, of, of the target that can generate a phase separation with two faces, one crystal, another is uh, uh, metallic glass. Then we achieve this kind of uh, perfect mixture of uh, nano crystal, super nano crystal, so with uh, around the six, ten nan six nanometer, and the mechanical property is around uh, Young's modulus over 20, which is a theoretical property of uh, material, okay? As you may see here, before all the material that can reach this property is quite small. And in our case, uh, uh, it's quite large because uh, the sample size is a diameter with, uh, say, 50 millimeter and uh, 10, micron, 10 micron thickness, okay? Then we extract a sample uh, to get the mechanical property. So as you may see here, the, uh, the chemical composition is quite amazing. We have a uh, uh, continuous change of chemical composition, but uh, at the heart of this uh, structure, we have a uh, copper rich structure inside of the crystal, and here is a magnesium rich. So what's the potential application? for this uh, uh, new structure. So the first example is a uh, orthopedic uh, implant using the magnesium alloy. So uh, I just presented this study conducted by Professor Qingming of Chinese University using our material. So the idea is uh, how to uh, develop a new material for the aging people for the osteoporosis. Every three second, one hip fracture in the world and with the increasing of the age, then the risk become higher and higher, okay? The problem is uh, if you use the traditional uh, implant such as titanium or um, stainless steel, uh, we need to do quite often the second operation to extract the the plate and other other supporting elements. So the idea is to develop a biodegradable structure. So what's the composition? So it's a magnesium based. But as I just say, the first material we have developed is with a composition of uh, uh, magnesium, copper, and yttrium. So this component may not be biocompatible. So for this reason, for this particular application, we have developed a new alloy, which is composed by magnesium, calcium, and uh, zinc. This, all these uh, three elements are necessary for the human uh, physiology. And uh, if we adjust adequately this composition, we can obtain the, this new structure, metallic glass with nanocrystal, okay? But uh, how to 
uh, enhance the structure, uh, mechanical property of the whole structure. Because just before I have shown is uh, 10 nanometers thick. So the people always ask, so this cannot be directly used as bio implant. But here I just show you one example. We combine the SMAT surface mechanical treatment plus this uh, SMAT can, you can see SMAT can drastically enhance the mechanical property, but the elongation is re drastically reduced. Then we use this uh, uh, dual phase material to further enhance the deformation capacity to stop the initiation of the crack using a gradient structure. You can see the deformation capacity is quasi similar than the base material, but the yield stress is uh, drastically enhanced. So other application, uh, because this is a optical material uh, forum. So I just want to show you uh, what the, uh, this dual phase material can do. First of all, due to the metallic glass property, uh, the surface can be very reflective. You can see here, a transparent. And also we can generate a different type of color using this uh, uh, new technology of dual phase. And then according to the needs, we can obtain different optical property using this dual phase with a very strong mechanical property. So quite often we have a polymer material that need enhancement of mechanical property and also that need also the reflective material of the uh, polymer materials of weak support. So it's a combination of structure and the functional property on the polymer. So this technology can easily apply for all the polymer material to put this uh, mechanical enhancement uh, with different uh, type of color of the material. And another example, uh, how to enhance the ductility of the material. So as I said, if the ground size is smaller than 10 nanometer, then we have a very good uh, uh, elastic uh, property uh, with quite a good deformation capacity. But uh, compared to this material with a very high deformation capacity, uh, is uh, different. So why this material is so flexible and so strong in deformation capacity, as you can see here with the compressive test, because this material we won't especially arrange to regulate the ground size larger than 10 nanometer. So why larger than 10 nanometer? When we load the material, if the ground size is uh, slightly larger than 10 nanometer, we will have a structure embedded in the metallic glass that can generate dislocation inside of structure, plenty of dislocation because uh, the ground size is very small. And uh, this dislocation can accommodate the whole structure for enhance the deformation capacity. So we can tailor made this dual phase structure is depending what property we want to have. If we want to have uh, uh, just uh, super elastic property, we can do it. If we want to have some plastic deformation property, we can also tailor made. And another way to develop uh, this kind of uh, dual phase material, uh, this is another example recently uh, published uh, three months ago. We have initially uh, a crystal, which is a so-called high entropy alloy. Then we top it with some other element so that we can have a, a glassy property. So we can have generate a nano glass combined with a 
nano crystal, and you can see this mechanical property is very good with very high deformation capacity, but uh, also a very strong uh, yield strength. So this new technology, a uh, new methodology, open the way to develop plenty of new material. Uh, as you see just before, even with a layer of 10 micrometer, we can affect the mechanical property of several millimeter. Okay. And today we are able to produce this kind of uh, very thick uh, coating up to 50 micron. So very soon, I hope we will have really a bulk material composed by this kind of material. So if we summarize this part of work, we can see the uh, mechanical property. Specific strengths can be further enhanced compared to strongest titanium alloy, strongest aluminum alloy. So basically, we can say double 500 to 700, the specific strengths compared to say 200 to 260 for titanium with a similar deformation capacity. So we have successfully obtained this for magnesium, aluminum, and titanium. So the next topic I want to talk is 3D and 4D additive manufacturing of nanomaterial. So 3D, 4D painting and additive manufacturing become now a very hot topic, okay? Just to give you some example, how hot is this, okay? So you may know, uh, of course, they have much more paper. For the battery, okay, in eight years from 2012 to 2019, the number of publications per year has been increased by three times. Perovice guide, four times. The nano related, two times. But for 3D, 4D painting, 18.5 times. So you can see. So if you may compare with other field, the CRISPR technology, you know, we just got uh, the Nobel Prize uh, with this is only increased by 161% in two years and 3D, 4D printing. And if additive manufacturing has been doubled. What that means? That means this today is really a new era for the 3D, 4D painting and additive manufacturing because with this technology, we can create plenty of new material. For this reason, we don't have many very highly cited paper because there are so many new technologies that can be developed, so many possibilities. But I think uh, in near future, we will have a focus on some new technology. So one example is 4D printing. So you may query what's the, what is the 4D printing, okay? So uh, for the Metallic material, ceramic material, and polymer material. We can have a shape of memory alloy, elastomer derived ceramics, and the shape of memory polymer that can generate shape change during the processing of the material. Of course, this shape change comes from a different type of stimuli driven by driven morphing. Okay. So, we can say it's a multi-stimuli driven morphine that can be light, heat, magnet, liquid, electricity, press stress, gas, etc., etc. So the multi-dimension induced transforming structure is the future of the uh, 3D printing or 4D printing. So today I just want to give you some hint on the 4D printing ceramics. So this is what we have developed two years ago, and we have a lot of ongoing projects on this particular technology. 
invented by us. So basically, we have an elastomer, elastomer drive the ceramics that can change the shape during the forming. So our roadmap for 3D printing plus nanomaterial is to develop high added value technology with the application in aerospace, space, and biomedical area. We try to develop a new super nano alloy and nano material for powder. Okay. With this new super alloy and the new powder, we can process for ink and associate sintering process after 3D printing. Then we can try to have 4D printing plus and in situ densification using the surface mechanical attrition and the new integration. So the Example of origami and 4D printing ceramics is a technology uh, developed in my group with uh, Dr. Liu Bo, who was my PhD student, and uh, Zhao Yan, uh, former postdoc, and uh, Wu Ge, my former PhD student. Okay, so this work was highlighted by different uh, media uh, in China, but also worldwide, such as uh, New Scientist such as uh, 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 Russian uh, television, et cetera, et cetera. So if you have time, you just need to type 4D painting ceramics. You have more information. So basically, we have developed a new technology, a special ink that can be uh, formed with a very large deformation capacity. And during the sintering, we obtain a very complex shape of the ceramics. So I don't have time to uh, give more detail. So the essence is here. We have successfully developed a super deformable uh, precursor mixed with a ceramic. Then this one can have a very high deformation capacity that allow us to be able to produce a complex shape of the ceramics structure. Now after sintering, you can see the material we obtain is a, again a dual phase material with a nano crystal of 20 nanometer and amorphous matrix with a silicon oxide carbide and also a nano scale porous structure. So this structure eventually can be used for the supporting material or for the substrate for catalysis. Okay. So how we obtain the complex shape? So basically, at design level, we try to design some articulation point for the design. Then we paint a two-layer structure. Then this two-layer structure is directly printed on top of this uh, substrate. This substrate will be deformed, okay? You will see. We will deform this substrate with deformation, programmable deformation. Okay, then we paint on top of this. Then after the painting, we can relax the deformation and then obtain a very complex shape of ceramics. As the, it's a two dimensional deformation. Then we can have all kind of combination. And also as the material is also uh, very deformable, we can also uh, do the origami and generate the structure that cannot be generated normally uh, by the classic 3D printing. Then combining different deformation capacity, then we can have different shape of the structure. So everything can be programmable and we can obtain plenty of geometry depending on the applied deformation relaxed on the substrate layer. In terms of mechanical property, our material, uh, the specific strength is much higher than the material of a similar size, okay? in other ceramics, 3D printing ceramics. The material, the, compared to the similar mechanical property, the size is obtained 
with uh, three, four orders larger structure. So before we can only, with such property, we can only print a very small size of ceramics. And today we can print a very large size compared to this uh, uh, micron, uh, 10 micron size of uh, ceramics. So with two layer, we can also form quite complex uh, structure. So we just need uh, to print uh, one layer, active layer for generating the shape, another layer for the mechanical property. So based on the simulation, now it's quite easy to obtain all kind of uh, material with uh, different type of shape and also uh, with material with the deformation capacity and the folding capacity. Thanks to this technology, you can see today we can obtain any, uh, many uh, shape, complex shape of the material if it's necessary. Of course, for large scale application, one is the 3C industry. You need, you know, for the 5G uh, technology, this technology can produce the case in ceramics and also can produce complex shape structure for a thermal hydration system. The thermal hydration system can also be used for as a thermal barrier coating of high temperature resistance structure. Okay. So uh, the 3D printed structure can be very complex and can resist very high temperature uh, uh, shock. So this can uh, be used, for example, for the hybrid thermal protection system. Okay, for the uh, for the space structure, and also we can bring this structure to form with a very small volume, then a very simple geometry. Then on the space, we can form the ceramics using a high energy source such as the laser, and then we can solidify and generate the ceramics. Then to form a high uh, thermal resistance component. Then the 3D printing of metallic material today is uh, proliferate. You can see this is uh, the photo I took uh, during the uh, exhibition last year in Frankfurt. You can see today we really, we are really able to produce very complex shape structure. Okay, so this is the whole turbine has been produced by 3D painting. However, 3D painting metallic structure has a problem for the fatigue. As you know, uh, all these mechanical components uh, need to have a high fatigue resistance. So how to improve the fatigue resistance of 3D painting metallic structure? So the surface mechanical attrition treatment is a very good uh, example. So basic idea is to do the 3D printed component and use the SMAT for the treatment and then uh, enhance the fatigue strength. So to test is because the surface mechanical treatment, is it possible to enhance a 3D, a very large sample, so fatigue strength? That is questionable. For this reason, we have a 3D printed large sample according to the ASTM standard, and then treat it, use SMART, and as you may see here, with as built uh, SMART, uh, as built 3D printing structure, can only have a yield, uh, fatigue strength of 280. With HIP, you can only enhance a little, but with HIP plus uh, SMAT, you can roughly double the fatigue strength of titanium alloy. So that is a very important achievement uh, because as you may see here, the surface mechanical achievement, uh, treatment is a very convenient technology to treat complex geometry material, okay? Because we, 
the bow are in movement using the acoustic way. So they can do, it can go anywhere, complex of a complex geometry structure. Okay. Then we demonstrate in the 3D printing the titanium, we can drastically enhance the fatigue strength. So the 4D printing of metallic and ceramic material is interesting, but no, we can also uh, show you some example of 4D printing, but with other stimulus, such as uh, water and alcohol. So this, you put this structure in the water that become a 3D structure, and then if you put it in the alcohol, then that become a flat structure. And then if we combine this with a different design, you can see this flower that can change the shape with different speed than uh, in the water. That means we can really design whatever we want to have the 4D painting with a different type of stimulus, such as alcohol and water. Now, this is an example of a design uh, at the normal state, it's a flat material, and then when you put it on the water, then you have a, a shape a change different with different curvature to form this uh, fish. So some people may say, oh, I thought your dimension is a four, the fourth dimension is time, like Einstein said. I, I fully agree. When Einstein proposed the fourth dimension, in fact, the time scale can also change with other stimulus. Uh, this is the effect of the black hole. Just also get the Nobel Prize. Okay? So here is the same. We can print a structure with simultaneously change in color, brightness, and shape. So you can see here, uh, in other one, the challenge is the high speed, how we can obtain a very high speed change. Here is a low speed, so we need 780 minutes to change the shape and also change the brightness and also change the color. So with 3D, 4D printing, now it's possible to create plenty of new material. So I really want to invite uh, young people to chip in in this very new field because uh, the 3D printing was invented, uh, say, 40, uh, 30 years ago, but that take the acceleration only during last two, three years. So please catch this opportunity to chip in. So what's the application and the future development? So. The future development of 3D and 4D printing, I think, is ink and powder design, printer design, with phase engineering and press stress engineering. So as I show you, the stress can be a very interesting stimulus for changing the shape. Okay? It's like the force between different stars on the sky, okay? The how to generate the 4D plus. First of all, we can combine soft material with hard material. Then we can also uh, develop uh, artificial intelligence on this structure by functionalizing the structure. Of course, the finally, we will have uh, integration to the final application. In terms of material, more than more effort will be the development of material that can reach the theoretical limit of the material, okay? Now we have several material that can reach this uh, score. However, if you are working on the old material, such as uh, steel, you can see steel is still alive because the specific strength is still very high compared to other materials such as uh, copper, nickel, or other material. Okay, so what I want to say is uh, don't give up. 
in each area, you may have a new route. So high strength, high ductility steel is still very important because the majority of structure material is still iron based. Don't forget it. Even in the car, in each car, we still have 60%, 70% of steel with so many development on other advanced material. So the major point for the development is to the development of a strength non-localization mechanism. So we have proposed this approach around eight, nine years ago, but now become very important. So any new structure should be done with this new approach. Uh, I don't have time to elaborate this. Uh, you can go to see our review paper recently published, then you can see which kind of mechanism can be generated by different process and what's the mechanism of the structure change. The last example I want to show you is combining with 3D painting. We can also develop a new structure such as a morphing wing of the aircraft, a morphing car. So in the past, the Europe and the United States developed a different uh, structure with uh, the change of the orientation of this wind. And today with uh, multiple straight, we can obtain different, uh, different structure, structure. Okay. This can be used for uh, multi-stable morphing wind. Okay. So you can change the shape of the wind to enhance the thermal, uh, Fluid dynamic property of the structure. So this is uh, one example. And then uh, with this structure, if we use the simulation, we can see the uh, thermal dynamic uh, fluid dynamics efficiency is much higher using the morphing wing. And for the morphing wing, uh, morphing structure, we can also use for high temperature structure. So the high entropy alloy we can develop is a very important candidate because with high entropy alloy, we can develop a material particularly strong for a particular zone of the working temperature, okay? So just to give you one example of nickel super alloy, how to form this uh, uh, morphing structure, okay? So we can do this. This is the same plate. It's not a different plate, okay? So if we put this on a multi-stable binary vector nozzle, okay? Here we can change the plus minus 20 degree, okay? Using this strategy. So to conclude, the future trend will be the development of materials and structure with atomic, nano, micro and macro scale, functional gradients, and heterogeneity for generating different toughening mechanisms based on strength non-localization concept. The multi-scale experimental and simulation tools developed as the major keys for understanding, designing, and achieving the nanomaterials using a top-down and additive approach. The 2D additive manufacturing of super nano structure material can provide lightweight solution for many space component, aerospace and biomedical structure in magnesium, aluminum, and titanium. The 3D, 4D printing of ultralight ceramics precursor and the complex shape ceramics will allow the fabrication of heat and thermal shock resistant and radiation resistant materials and the structure. So the technology can also be extended to other high melting temperature material based on based complex shape component. The fatigue resistance of nano structure, the 3D printing titanium is two times 
of the asprinted counterpart that offer additional rooms for weight reduction for reused structure such as aircraft or space shuttle. So the newly developed technology can incorporate other modes of fourth dimension control, such as magnetic, water, alcohol, light, heat, thermal property, gradient, etc. So to conclude, I would like to quote the founder of Porsche, Mr. Ferry Porsche. He one day said, in the beginning, I looked around and could not quite find the car I dreamed of. So I decided to build it myself. So, and this is how they shape the future of sports car. But I want to quote of this because I'm from mechanical engineering. So normally I should not try to produce new material. But we, I hope but I have the same problem than him. I cannot find the material I dream. And also, uh, I cannot uh, find this on the market. So for this reason, I decided to develop myself the new material to fulfill the design need of my mechanical system. So this is also how we develop new material. Finally, I would like to thank all my former students and the postdoc in my group. And here I just want to highlight some people like uh, Dr. Wu Ge, Dr. Uh, August Chen, Dr. Liu Xiaowei, Sun Li Gang, uh, Li Ying, and uh, Hao Feng Qian, and uh, Liu Huo, and yeah, all these. Uh, Say with a circle. So these are the results from this group of former students uh, who are now working in different institutions. And uh, of course, some are still in my group. So, uh, and also I would like to thank the National Science Foundation with the major program and also a uh, Ministry of Science and Technology uh, with the National Strategic Program. And finally, Guangdong Provincial Department of Science and Technology with key area research and development program of Guangdong Province, which is uh, uh, additive manufacturing. Okay. So I would like to thank all these funding agencies also in Hong Kong, uh, which uh, always support my research. And uh, so this is my sharing today. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so, talk. Now we are going to start the Q&A section. So uh, I will ask the questions on behalf of the audience. The questions are collected from the live broadcasting platforms like Bilibili, Baidu Live, YouTube, and Facebook. Um, so uh, perhaps we show it. Shall we start? Yeah, please. Uh, so here comes the first question. Is it possible to get the ordered frame structure? Order of green structure. I think this question is about how to how to control the formation of green structure. Green structure. Okay. Yes. Uh, as you may see, uh, using the technology we develop, if you choose properly the target material, we are able to produce from metallic glass and uh, large ground size crystal. Okay. Then in between. You have infinity, infinity the possibility of combination. And to me, the best combination for the mechanical property is around 10 nanometer. If you want to have a high elastic property, so that should be lower than 10 nanometer, which are so called the super nano dual phase. And if you want to have some deformation capacity, but uh, you can sacrifice some mechanical property. It's, the mechanical property is very, still very high because uh, uh, then you can try to produce the material with 10, 15 nanometer. Then this material will have a very high 
plastic deformation capacity like what I have shown in the aluminum alloy. So it depends on the need. So this is uh, for the structural application. But I do believe for the functional application, you may want to have other combination. For example, for the superconductor property, for magnet, mag, mag, magnetic property or catalysis, I, I think, yeah, and even for optical property, you may want to have other structure. But this technology enable us to they easily allow the pool of the possible material. So yes, the answer is yes. We already uh, successfully obtained different type of material. You can see, we can start from uh, so-called uh, uh, high entropy alloy that by editing some uh, element like a si silicon or other that can facilitate the formation of the glass space then we can obtain another material. So I think what we have opened is the possibility to uh, to do all this kind of material. But to facilitate the thing, it's better to choose a material which may not have a very strong, the so-called glass formability. Because for the people working on the metallic glass, we always try to, uh, to have a tight, glass formability material. But I think we need to change the mind. With the PVD, we can change a lot of uh, uh, condensation uh, uh, condition. So for this reason, we should choose a material that can switch easily between the crystal and the glass. Then by changing the processing process, then you can fabricate easier the dual phase material. Okay, so the, the, the concept is uh, slightly different. Before, we always try to have uh, so-called high glass formability material, but to me, uh, we need to change the mind to find out, because many people, after the publication of this uh, cover story in Nature, many people ask me, so how, how I cannot obtain, so I, I say, how you choose the target? So they always choose the target with uh, high glass formality. So to me, you may think out of the box, say, choose the material which can switch in two ways. Then when you modify the condition, then it's easier to either obtain a material with many glass or another material with many crystals. Thank you, Prof. Uh, the second question is, can we use AI and the theoretical calculation to predict the new structure with controlled twin and face? So uh, it's uh, about the simulation. Uh, for the moment, no. But uh, uh, in fact, uh, we have uh, one person who uh, who is working on this. But uh, today, uh, as I said, if you choose uh, the right composition, because there are a lot of study have been done, then you can still easily perform this. But I think the AI will be useful for catalytic property, magnetic property, and superconducting property. Okay, so for the moment, we are looking for the mechanical property. Uh, but for the moment, we go faster with our uh, human um, thinking than the AI. Okay, but AI should be a good orientation. For example, if you really want to obtain a color, then AI may be a, a, but at least a, a AI plus a material genome approach. Okay, then uh, we may be able to produce 100 material very quickly and then find out which one is the best for the uh, targeted property, because uh, I do believe for the catalytic for catalytic property, because I know there are many chemical people here. Uh, we, I think it's a new way to produce this all this material with this uh, ordered small island. Okay. Thank you, Prophet.
Um, so the third question is, uh, I think it's two parts. The first is, is the 4D printing introduced the parameter of the curvature, curvature compared to the 3D printing method? And the second part is, what is the most important advantage of 4D compared to 3D printing? Okay, so uh, as you may see, uh, the 4D printing, uh, if the if it depends on the stimulus, then it can be the stimulus of a force. So you can, for example, ceramic, you can generate a very complex shape that cannot be directly formed by 3D printing. That is the same for the polymer material because uh, if uh, the material is uh, hydrophobic, then uh, the shape is different. It's, uh, uh, if the material is uh, hydrophilic, it's another shape, okay? So for this reason, uh, with different stimulus, 4D approach can give us even more uh, choice. Okay, so for this reason, I think this is uh, 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 it's possible to generate uh, complex geometry. Uh, what we try to do is to use uh, uh, finite element method, try to predict what's the shape we want to append, okay? For the ceramics, you have additional difficulty because uh, during the uh, sintering, you have a shrinkage of the structure. So as, by combining experimentation and the simulation, then it's able to, uh, we are able to, it's possible to produce a very complex shape. So uh, the second question was, uh, the most important advantage of the 4D compared with ah, 3D. The, the most uh, important uh, advantage of uh, 4D is, uh, uh, you know, the 3D can only print uh, geometry. The 4D can change the geometry either with time, either with uh, with time. Even with time, you you should have a driving force for the changing. Okay. They always very many people ask me, oh, why the Einstein the fourth dimension is time? But the time is changed with the the star in the galaxy. Okay, the time is changed with the black hole. So uh, for this reason, we need to have a, a driving force because uh, uh, when you change the shape, you you spend energy. So either you have a stimulus from magnetic, light, chemical reaction. Uh, so the, the advantage of 4D to me is the possibility to uh, go to another world because uh, before many geometry, geometry is not possible. Uh, before many geometry uh, cannot uh, uh, reversible in terms of uh, uh, stimulus. Uh, today, uh, I can say, Everything is possible because, uh, uh, just give you one example. Our, our, our human, uh, uh, organ is a, a structure that changes the shape with the stimulus. Okay. So tomorrow, if we want to paint the artificial heart, then we need to take into account all this. So today we are working with uh, colleagues in uh, Hong Kong U and, uh, uh, yeah, in Hong Kong U for artificial heart and uh, also for the liver. But the, the first step is not to, to produce a real functional artificial heart and art, artificial liver. The first uh, is to to develop this for drug uh, screening, okay? To test the drug, uh, if we can, say, extract an organism from your uh, body and uh, proliferate, produce a 3D object, then see which drug is more efficient for your own people according to your age, the state of the health, et cetera, et cetera. So tomorrow, today it's already possible in the, in the, for the artificial bone. Okay. But tomorrow I hope it will be also possible for other organs. So this is a 4D, open the door for the new world. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Lee. So um, this is the last question. So uh, please let's thank Prof. Lee for the wonderful talk again. And welcome to submit your excited work to SmartMap. 
it will be our pleasure to publish your work in the journal. So uh, thank you so much and see you next time. 嗯，感谢科研云和能源学人的支持。近期会有更多精彩讲座，敬请持续关注 Smart Math。今天的直播到此结束，感谢各位支持。谢谢教授。Thank you very much。嗯，谢谢大家。